quilting friends, it's Carolina Moore, your favorite sewing and quilting YouTuber, and I am back today with my baby lock jubilant, and we are going to do a part two of the Quilt As You Go series. When I first did the Quilt As You Go video, and you can find that video here, I had no idea how much y'all would love it, and you just really did, and want more. So who am I to say no? <laughs> Let's do some more Quilt As You Go. You ready? Let's get started. So what I have here is I have some backing fabric that I've already cut to 18 inches wide, which is a half a yard. And this is actually a little less than 40 inches large because I cut off 12 inches for my center square because the backing fabric and the center square I'm using happen to be from the same half yard cut, but you can do whatever length you want on this. And the only reason I chose 18 inches is because I have batting on a roll that is 18 inches wide. So I'm going with that. But again, you can do whatever length and whatever width you want for this kind of technique. I went ahead and folded it in half and then marked a, that's right here, this blue line right here. That is my center line because I have a 12 inch square and I have fussy cut this 12 inch square. So I have a 12 inch square with this really fun circle motif on it. And I'm going to put this right down in the middle, lining up one point and the other point with the line that I drew. There we go. And I'm laying this down. Now 12 inches is fairly big and there's a lot of potential for this to shift. I don't want it to do that. So I'm going to grab my basting spray and I'm just going to give the batting a quick little spritz, not a lot, but just to kind of tack this middle down. so that that doesn't move and stays nice and flat and in place. If you don't have basting spray, you could use some pins. I had already used basting spray to base this back to the batting so the back of the batting don't move. You could pin that as well, but you just wanna make sure that everything stays together. Okay, so I have these layers together and now we're ready to start the quilt as you go process. It's already like, we're already getting going on this. It's that quick. I just have two and a half inch strips that I use. These are two and a half inch strips from my video on how to cut your own pre-cuts. If you missed the pre-cut cutting video, go ahead and catch that video here. I'll also have links to these videos down in the description in case these little icons don't show up for you because they don't show up on all devices. So I just have two and a half inch strips in coordinating fabrics. And all of these are from the same line all art gallery fabrics, of course. And I'm gonna start going around and around. I'm gonna start with this red right here. I just think that's gonna give a good pop to the center. I'm doing another table topper, table runner. This one's a little shorter. And I'm gonna go ahead and place this one down. I've got a tail going here. Now, this one I did not cut off my selvage edge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this because I want it the same like length as my square. I can lift this up because I gave myself a crease. And I'm just trimming this up. There we go. So now I'm going to pin this in place. There are a lot of layers going on here and we just wanna add a couple pins to make sure that our layers don't shift on us and that everything stays where it's supposed to. Now on my machine, I still have the same presser foot that I had before, which is the quarter inch seam allowance presser foot with no guide. So we're gonna go ahead and stitch a quarter inch seam allowance right here. I'm just gonna put this underneath my machine. There we go. I'm going to put my presser foot down and you can see I'm starting a little bit in. I'm not starting all the way at the edge. And that's because I'm going to have a, a beginning of my seam in the middle of my project. And that's really unusual for us in quilting. We don't normally do that in quilting, but because of the design that I want this to make, we're going to do that in quilting today. So I'm going to go just a couple stitches forward. One or two is fine. Then hit the reverse button and backstitch all the way 
to the very edge of the fabric and then go forward. And this back and forward is going to give me a beginning that's not gonna unravel, it won't like unpick on its own. It will, that stitch will stay. And so this piece will have longevity. It's not going to go through the wash once or twice and start falling apart. So that's super important. You will be able to see a little bit on the back because you're gonna have some thread bulk from going back and forwards like I did, but that's okay. This quilt as you go method is so fast that you don't mind that there's a little extra thread on the back that no one's ever really gonna see because who looks at the back of a table runner? Nobody, nobody looks at the back of the table runner. When I get to the end, I don't need to go back and forward. I'm just gonna lift up my needle, cut my threads, and there we go. I have my first piece on here. Now I'm gonna open this up and I'm gonna finger press it just like we did with our last runner. I love how this red is pulling the red from here. It looks so good. And now, now I could cut this at this angle right here but I'm gonna go ahead, I want straight edges because that's gonna make my life easier and this will keep me from having to cut twice. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut. There we go. So I cut this straight and that's our first strip on. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. I'm gonna line this up with this edge and with this edge, and I'm going to pin it in place. Now, traditionally we keep all of what we're working on on the left-hand side and our seam allowance on our right-hand side, and I'm going to keep with that tradition. My brain just works better when things are where they're supposed to be. And that means that I'm gonna be starting from the outside and going in on this project. I'm adding a couple extra pins because I know outside going in, if any of this fabric shifts, I'll end up with more fabric here. It will not be the end of the world, but I like having everything stay where it's supposed to. Okay. So I have this all pinned down. I can start at the outside and I'm going to stitch my way in. Again, just using that quarter and two lines. all the way up to the edge of the fabric. And then just like I started last time, I'm gonna end this time. Going back a couple stitches, going forward a couple stitches, and then I can cut my thread. Here I'm gonna cut with scissors just close to the fabric, and then on the back, I'm gonna cut close to the fabric so I don't have extra threads. I'm gonna go ahead and look at our back. I have an extra thread from when I started my last piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and clip that off. And I don't know if you can see, depending on the backing fabric, it'll be more or less obvious. This is my first line of stitching and it goes a quarter inch past this line of stitching, which is my second line of stitching. And that one actually goes a little bit further. And you can see a little bit of thread build up here and thread build up there. If it bugs you, match your bobbin thread to whatever your backing fabric is and it'll be less noticeable. So on the front of our table runner, again, I'm just going to press this over, finger press it. If your batting is 100% cotton like mine is, you can absolutely use an iron to press it and you can use a seam roller. I love my seam rollers, but I, I'm just finger pressing these. They're okay. And then I'm going to do the same thing again, lining up these edges here. and trimming this so that it's square. <clears throat> now there should be enough fabric for me to add one more right here, and there is. 
And so I'm going to keep going. I did this line first, then this line, and I'm going to do this line, and then I'm going to do that line. So just work my way all the way around. And then I'm going to keep going. I'll keep working my way around, adding more and more strips until I have the point past the edge of my batting. And then I'll just add strips and angles here. If once I've reached, once my point has reached here, I don't want to add more strips, I could actually trim it up. And so I could have a table runner that has points on the end instead of being square at the end. But this table runner is already fairly small. I don't want to make it smaller by cutting off my corners. So I'm just going to go all the way to those edges and then square it up. So let's go ahead and start adding some more rounds of strips. So I went ahead and trimmed this one up here, but you'll see when I flip this over that I could have actually trimmed it here because you need the seam allowance line to be right up against the batting. So that's where it can get cut. It doesn't need to be cut way out here and that will save you this amount of fabric because this fabric here will end up being waste. So you may want to wait until after you've sewn it and pressed it to cut so that you know exactly where to cut. But having more fabric here is way better than not having enough. So same thing when I start over here, I just need to start with the right side up against the batting. So right there is plenty to make this. And this is not a lot left, like it's clearly not enough for a whole strip, but when I get out here and I'm adding little pieces, this will be enough for a little piece out here. There we go. Okay, that's my last piece. I'm just gonna finger press that over. And that's the whole runner. You can see a little bit on the back. Now, if you've got any threads, loose threads on the back, just go ahead and trim those off. Some of them might have gotten caught in other stitching if you didn't trim them off right away. Um, and you just wanna be careful picking those out with like a pin or the point of a seam ripper very carefully to make sure that you don't rip any of your other seams out. Any threads here on the edges, those are all going, going to get trimmed because we're going to trim off all of this and square up our table runner. But does not look like so, it's just so fun and I love this fussy cut center. So when we did our last table runner that was just the strips, it was quicker than this, went together really fast. This has a little more dimension to it, it took a little bit more time, that's okay but we folded it in half and cut it, just trimmed it up. This, if you have a bigger mat and you can cut it across a whole mat, that's awesome. You can put a couple mats next to each other on the floor and that can help. I don't have that here in the area where I film, so we're gonna make do with our smaller mat. I'm gonna fold it in half just like I did last time, but this time I'm folding it with the right side out. And that's because I want 
to pay attention to these points that I have here and here because that's my middle and I want that to stay straight right down my middle. So I have that. Now I also, when I put my binding on, I wanna make sure that those points stay. That's why I cut my square to 12 inches. There's plenty of room for my points to stay. So I want to cut more than a quarter inch over that. I'm gonna cut, let's see, I have a good inch looks like over that that I'll be able to cut. So I'm gonna put this, line this up right here on my mat. I'm gonna put this point right here on this corner here. And that way it will be easy for me to see what one inch over from that point is. And then I'll end up doing the same on this side. Grab my nice big ruler, line everything up on the mat. And then if I look in here, if I have batting all in here, then I know that there's batting left in here. It looks like I just trimmed it perfect. Now I did get a rotating mat, but I'm not going to use it in this video. I'm just gonna rotate my whole mat. Just leave everything exactly where it is and rotate the whole thing. Now this one I want to bring over one inch. Maybe I should have lined this up before I rotated it. There we go. It's just a, it's just a hair over. Now I can bring this to an inch. Looking in here to make sure that there's batting all the way through. There isn't right here. My batting's a little bit short. So I'm gonna trim this off by a quarter inch and I'm gonna trim the other side off by a quarter inch. I didn't have a full inch on each side. So I'm gonna trim a quarter inch off this edge. Then I'm just gonna go over to this edge and trim off a quarter inch. And that way my center square will still be smacked out in the center. And I still have plenty of space for my binding to go on there and not chop off this pretty point and this pretty point up here. Look at that. So I've got my top and bottom edges. These edges are so fun, but there's no batting in there. So I just need to trim these off. I'm going to line up this point on my mat. That's just a five. And looks like this is gonna have to get cut off at 19. So that's 14 inches from the middle. And that little white is gonna barely show up. I'm gonna spin it around. If I do it at the one this time, one, one. I can go at the 15 and that's gonna again be 14 inches from the middle. And if you look, somehow this was a little off center because I do have extra on this side. But that's okay. I'd rather the finished be exactly square. Or exactly squared up and exactly this in the center. How fun is that table topper? And I love this with the pops of red. That's it. All that's left is to bind this. If you go to this video right here and you go in 11 minutes and 11 seconds, you will see a binding tutorial on both machine and hand binding, a small project. And you can use that exact same technique for binding this project. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you gave it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, leave those down below. I've had so much fun making this project with you. Hopefully you're having fun doing quilt as you go as well. Thanks so much for watching my friends. I will see you right here real soon. Bye for now.